It's very dramatic up here in North Wales. I think there's a storm rolling in. It's become very Wagnerian, hasn't it? <laughs> it has. Coming in. We're in the Talaka. Talakre. Talak. You've been trying to teach me all day. <laughs> Dune system here. It's magnificent. Let's go up in the air and have a proper look at it. Now, it's about six kilometres long and it's a site of special scientific interest and that's because some very, very interesting creatures live here. A lighthouse is weird, isn't it? You're just stuck out in the middle there. But uh, it's a beautiful place, as I say, right on the northernmost tip of Wales. And uh, if we just go around the corner to the east there, you've got the d home to over 100,000 birds every winter. And then the other way, it extends four miles to Rill and Prestatyn. And in the distance then, you can see the Cluidian Hills. Beyond them, Snowdonia, of course. And then to the north, Liverpool Bay and this huge wind farm. So that's where we are. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely dramatic. Hopefully it won't uh, start to pour with rain, but it might. <laughs> we'll keep going. Now, this is where we are. You can see there's Sherborne down there, and we've moved up right to here. So um, that's where we are. Why are we actually here? Now, we're here to try to solve a little bit of a mystery, because if you look around on these dunes, you find tiny little holes poked into the sand. Now, the holes are too small uh, to be mouse or vole, something like that. There's one. And it's almost like you have poked a finger into the sand. So what on earth is going on? Well, I can give you a clue. Give us a clue, Yolo. It's a reptile. I'll give you an even bigger clue as well. It's one of our lizards. We have three native lizards here in the UK. Let's have a look at them. First one here, of course, is the slow worm, quite familiar to, to most of us. Looks like a snake. There's actually a legless lizard. The second one here, then, is the viviparous, or common lizard. Again, very widespread, often seen in places like uh, graveyards, on, on stone walls. But the last one is one we're interested in. It's the rarest one of the lot and the most colourful. It is the sand lizard. And this, look at that, that is a beautiful male in full breeding Gorgeous. regalia. Beautiful. I tell you what, let's have a more detailed look at the sand lizards. And this was a, a film that we shot here at this very site in the sunshine yesterday morning. First of all, so look at the female. This is her basking on the sand. Of course, they're exothermic. They use the heat of the sun to warm up, but she's not far from cover there either. Any threat, and she dashes in, and she's gravid. She's pregnant, this one. And you can see that very distinctive pattern. And this species shows sexual dimorphism. This is the male. Sexual dimorphism means that the male and the female are very different. Now, the male is stunning. He is a big beast, bull-like. He's about 20 centimetres long. And, of course, he has this lime green colour from his head all the way down his flanks. And he'll have that for the few weeks that he's in breeding condition. When he's not in breeding condition, you're like, what is he? He's just it a dull... He's a dull brown. Dull, he goes back to a colour. dull brown. But he's a beauty. An absolute he's a beauty. beauty. Now, what fascinates me about these sand lizards is this. I don't know if you can... See, they're going to blow away. What do you think those are? Those are eggs, sand lizard eggs. I'm glad to tell you the sand lizard that hatched out of these eggs are actually in these dunes around us now. Now, slow worms don't lay eggs. Uh, viviparous lizards don't, the common lizard, but sand lizards do lay eggs. Isn't that weird? And we can see those eggs actually hatching out. They're actually underground there, and they lay about five to ten of them. And then after about two to three months, it's a long time, the little tiny lizard's got an egg tooth on the, on the end of its nose and it just bursts out through that parchment-like egg, it comes out, and then it takes about 24 hours then to get out and come out of the sand there. That's a young, that's classic, that, that's those spotty little eyes on the, on the lizard, that baby lizard, that's a sand lizard. OK, so we've seen, we wanted to solve that mystery of those holes. Clearly, it's something to do with the sand lizard. Yolo, will you please complete the story for us? I will indeed. Imagine I am a female sand lizard. I Easy have, to do, mate. I have a BBC <laughs> prop here. Follow me over Expensive here. Expensive prop. Now, what they do is they find a south-facing slope, because those are the warm areas here in these demons. And what the female will do is she will dig holes. Now, this is not a good place, but she will dig holes. She'll go in eight centimetres. That's obviously not a good spot, but she'll dig holes all around. And what she's doing is she is testing. She's testing the temperature. She's testing the humidity. She's testing the sand. And once she finds the right place, she'll go in there. She'll lay her eggs between 5 and 15, usually. And as she comes out, she 
back fills that hole. So she seals that hole, she leaves them there, and those eggs develop because of the heat of the sun, and they hatch out at the end of August and into September. So that, Martin, is what the holes are. So we solved the mystery there, you see. <laughs> with a <laughs> stick. <laughs> with, with a little stick. OK, well, uh, we've solved that mystery. Now, when you come back to us, we're going to show you an incredible trick that sand lizards do to try to avoid predation. But now, it's back to Michaela. Yes, well, it's looking incredibly dramatic up here. Look at that. We're up here on the Talacre. Ta Talacre? I still, I still haven't got it right. The Talacre dunes. We're studying the lives of the sand lizards that live here. And it's not the safest place to be, is it, Yolo? It's not. You'd think it would be, but when you walk around here, you see gulls, you see uh, corvids, you see that foxes here, badgers here, and all of those want to eat sand lizards. So if you're a lizard living here, you really need a trick up your sleeve if you're going to survive. They've got it. Look at this superb model made at no expense. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's a lizard, a sand lizard, and what will happen is if the lizard's attacked and it becomes really serious, it does a thing called autotomy or self amputation. It decides to rip off its tail like that, and there's a special weakening in the vertebra there, and muscles constrict around that, and it snaps off, and the blood vessels constrict as well, and that stops it bleeding to death. So now you've just got a tail there. What happens to the tail, Yolo? Well, watch this. Hope this works. Yeah! Like that. <laughs> the tail lashes about, and of course that draws the attention of a would-be predator, and we can see the real thing happening. Here it goes. Look at that, there's the lizard. I mean, it's very sad when it comes off. Uh, but don't worry, because they do grow again. And some of them really wriggle around violently. And Chris Packham told me that there's one that jumps, a, the tail jumps a metre in the air and makes a big soaring noise. Do you believe that? If Chris Packham says so, it's got to be true. I think it's a muff, a made-up fact. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Yolo, that's an amazing thing. Now, Yolo has been involved in the conservation of these, of these animals because they're still, despite their clever tricks, very, very much threatened, aren't uh, they? They are very much so. And I remember the first release here in Wales in 2003. I think we've got some footage of that now. I, I was involved in filming that. That was on the west coast of Wales. And since then, here we go, look, uh, a group of people from amphibian reptiles Conservation, Chester Zoo, private breeders, they were all involved and we are reintroducing them to one of their former haunts on, on the west coast and since that time they've been reintroduced to five different sites here in Wales and here at Talacre they've in the last four or five years they've released 500 animals here. 500 now animals. let me show you the distribution currently of uh, these lizards. Uh, up on Col here, uh, Kent, Wales, of course, all around the north and west Wales coast, Devon, Cornwall, but the core area was always down here, Dorset, Hampshire, Surrey, and up on the Sefton coast. But they are thankfully doing very well. But reintroduction, of course, is only the start. There's a lot of hard work involved. As we found, because just yesterday, the conservation teams are out on these very dunes, working furiously away. And at first sight, it looks really dramatic. You think, what on earth are they doing there? Um, because they're ripping up bits of marine grass, but they've got to expose sand so that the, the sand lizards can not only lay eggs, but they can bask. It's essential for them to, to get heat. Now, the horses here are also crucial. They've got five horses, and they crop the grass down too. It's all about exposing sand so to help the sand lizard survive. But uh, as Yolo says, that conservation work has to go on and on and on. Now, I think if we're lucky, we've got a final chance to see a live sand lizard. Look at that. We have, Martin. Look at that. You can keep your snoring water reel and your kestrel snot. This is what it's all about. <laughs> Look at that. That is a male sand lizard in full breeding regalia. Isn't that a beauty? Now, I have to emphasise, this is not a wild animal. They're all breeding at the moment. This is an animal that's come from Chester Zoo. And, and, and the good news, really, Martin, when you think about it, they were extinct here in Wales in 1960, but over the past 50 years, they are doing very well. And, and the future looks rosy. Really Great nice. news. Absolutely brilliant. Time to go back to the studio, back to Michaela.